who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue revolves around one of the most remarkable men you may have never heard of, Richard E. Byrd, and his relationship with Antarctica, and the secretive missions he carried out there until his dying day. Some of you have followed the legend of Richard Byrd through the hollow earth theory. We aren't going to be covering any hollow earth in this video, but instead focus on the man and his involvement with the South Pole. The Reader's Digest version of Richard Byrd is as follows. Born in 1888, he became an American naval officer who specialized in feats of exploration. He was a pioneering American aviator, Medal of Honor winner, polar explorer, aircraft navigator, expedition leader in the worst environments in the world, and the youngest admiral in the history of the Navy. In addition, his list of awards takes up several pages in Wikipedia, including three ticker tape parades in his honor. In short, he was Indiana Jones on steroids. Some people will say that Roy Chapman Andrews was the real Indiana Jones, and you might be right. But Richard Byrd beat Indy six days a week and twice on Sunday. I mention all his accolades to paint a picture of credibility and trust. The governments of the United States and the world trusted his judgment and leadership, and took advantage of every chance they had to put him in charge of special missions. The first large-scale mission was an expedition to Antarctica in 1928. This was noteworthy, because even though he had just flown over the North Pole in 1926, all expeditions from 1928 on were focused on the South. The expedition lasted two years, and during it, at the age of 41, he was promoted to Admiral. His second Antarctic expedition ran from 1933 to 1935, and his third from 39 to 40. While in Antarctica, he was also an advisor for other countries who had their own expeditions, including England, France, Germany, and building off previous countries' expeditions from Belgium, Japan, and Sweden. He then helped lead U.S. Navy fleet operations in World War II, was present during the Japanese surrender in 1945, but then something strange happened. He went back to Antarctica. Now, some of you aren't surprised, because he'd been there since 1928, and I agree with you. It's the how that's interesting here. His fourth trip to Antarctica wasn't an expedition. It was a military operation called Operation High Jump. Commanding an entire aircraft carrier group that included 13 support ships, Admiral Byrd led 4,700 men to the South Pole, for reasons that are still shrouded to this day. Some say they were chasing the remaining Nazi fleet, even though Germany had surrendered a full year earlier. Others say there was a Nazi base established in Antarctica during the war, when Admiral Byrd was absent. None of these theories are important for this video. What we do know is that the U.S. had sent an excessively large military force to the ice, all under the guise of peaceful intentions. During this operation, Admiral Byrd told a chilly newspaper this, The most important result of his observations and discoveries is the potential effect that they have in relation to the security of the United States. The fantastic speed in which the world is shrinking, recalled the Admiral, is one of the most important lessons learned during his recent Antarctic exploration. I have to warn my compatriots that the time has ended when we were able to take refuge in our own isolation and rely on the certainty that the distances, the oceans, and the poles were a guarantee of safety. After the operation, Admiral Byrd toured the States and gave interviews, the most interesting of which is a national television show in 1954 called The Long Ines Chronoscope. A horrible name, but a decent show. I've added a segment of it at the end of this video and linked it in the description. During this television interview, he first spoke of an area beyond the South Pole as large as the United States, which no one had set foot on yet. He then went on to say that there would probably be expeditions year after year because the U.S. government had really become interested. The interviewers then probed as to why the interest in the South, when any perceived military threat from Russia, keep in mind this was 1954, would be from the North. He went on to say that it was the most valuable and important place in the world for science. It involved the future of the nation, 
an untouched reservoir of untapped resources, including coal, oil, minerals, and uranium. He added that at the time of the interview, there were seven nations currently engaged in Antarctica, including Russia, Australia, Argentina, Chile, and New Zealand. During the interview, the Admiral talked about planning the next military mission to Antarctica. It was called Operation Deep Freeze and ran from 1955 to 1956. The mission was completed, and he supposedly returned home. Now this is where you come in and say, so what? And normally I'd agree with you, except for what happened next. Nothing happened next. The missions just suddenly stopped, and that was it. No other expeditions, military or otherwise, were conducted on the continent, ever. Then a treaty was put in place banning any country from doing basically anything. The end. And if you're wondering what you're missing, it's this. Admiral Byrd goes on television, says that this massive body of land, most of which sits on a plateau two miles high, is rich with every resource you could ever want, energy rich, pristine, with no indigenous population or plant life, and every country that has sent teams is ready to carve it up like a big turkey. Not to mention, there's an expanse of land larger than the United States they haven't even looked at yet. And out of the blue, everyone just calls the whole thing off? There are no environmentalists in 1959. This is land of diner food and 20 cent gas. I'm calling total BS on this one. The dollar value of the initial resources fined would have fueled armies of greedy companies. So what happened? They found the edge, that's what. And the last thing they were going to do was let unsupervised companies near it, regardless of the money. Even if it was hundreds of miles away, you couldn't allow resource corporations even into a safe area, and then years down the road as they expanded, tell them, oh, sorry, you can't go beyond this point. When the companies would ask why, what would you tell them? And now the interior of Antarctica is off limits, with no revisions until the year 2041. You can take tours of the outer islands, but there is a hidden line, enforced by the military, that you will not be able to cross. Because the interior is actually the exterior edge. It's there, it's hidden, and it's protected. The earth you live on is flat. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. The North Pole used to be a no man's land, but uh, these are the days when by buying a ticket on a commercial airliner, you can fly across the North Pole and drink a cocktail at the same time. Yet only three score or more years ago, about 35 years ago, our guest tonight found out whether there was any land north of the North American continent. He made that first discovery flight, and I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. This is a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, Admiral a, an expedition to which I believe you're the advisor is now en route. Uh, what is that expedition doing? Well, that's the icebreaker Atka. And it's a reconnaissance expedition. It's going down to the South Pole area to make certain observations 
and to, to look for some bases. They will be back in April, and they will report back, and upon the information we get from that undertaking, uh, we will base the bigger expedition that's to follow. Uh, is that very definitely planned, or uh, is that... Uh, that is being planned right now. So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be a number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. Well, Admiral Byrd, I can understand. I think everybody can, the interest in the North Pole, because it's so near our greatest challenger, Soviet Russia. But for why this interest in the uh, bottom of the world? Nobody living down there, is there? No, it's, um, it's pretty cold. There's only one permanent resident, that's the Emperor Penguin. The little ones live further north. I tell you one reason they're interested. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. That's why the scientific groups all over the nation are really interested. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. And, uh, you know, as the world swings with an ever-increasing acceleration, far-flung places, once useless, like we thought the North Pole was, and no man's land, become very useful. Uh, the bottom of the world will be important, not only to us, but to our allies. Uh, does it, I was going to ask you, does it have military importance? Uh, it has some, and uh, as the world shrinks, it will continue to shrink with an ever-increasing acceleration, thus bringing these places closer. And in the future, I can see a time when it will be very, very important strategically. Well, has the development and, and of air power increased there, the strategic importance of places like the... Uh, oh, very much Palmer so. Palmer Peninsula, was it? Uh, very much so. Even now, if uh, anything happened and we uh, lost the Panama Canal, we would have to control the islands just north of Antarctica, which are part of Antarctica. I've then between there and Cape... Admiral, you speak of the resources of Antarctica. What are they? What, uh, what are the natural resources there? Well, uh, we've found enough of coal within 180 miles of the South Pole in a great uh, ridge of mountains it's not covered with snow, enough to supply the whole world for quite a while. Well, uh, that's, that's the coal. Now, there's evidence of uh, other, many other minerals. Uh, we are pretty sure there's oil. Now, that coal shows the bottom of the world. Now, by far, the coldest spot in the world. Where that coal is gets 100 below zero in the winter. Well, uh, it was once tropical. So uh, we think there's oil there, and there's evidence, probably uranium. Is it any secret? Is there uranium there? That would be the only thing that would be practical to uh, actually go after, I suppose. Everything else would be economically uh, unfeasible, wouldn't it? Well, as we recklessly expend our resources, the time will come when we can, we'll have to go after that stuff down there. Well, you know, I, I avoided what you said about uranium. I'm not sure about that. I don't want to have the world fight over the Antarctic. And Robert, is there a competition among other nations to try to get information about uh, Antarctica and uh, possibly to secure some of these resources? Well, uh, yes. Uh, there are now seven nations very much interested. Russia is interested tremendously. That I'm sure of. Australia has an expedition down there. The Argentine, the Chile, New Zealand, Britain, and so on. Now, you can understand those people down there being uh, interested because they live down there, the New Zealanders, the Argentinians, the Chileans, and the Australians. And so uh, we, uh, we don't do much about claiming anything. Admiral, you uh, make do this sound a little crowded. Uh, uh, are, are, are there that many expeditions now there or en route there? Uh, well, you know, as I said, it's the most peaceful place in the world, but I don't think it will be for long because of this intense interest on the part of, uh, of other nations and this nation. <laughs>